What's going on, everybody? Josh Wilson and new episode of the Big Dog Podcast. I'm really excited today. Got a really good friend of mine. It's it's funny, man. You know, the guest I have with me today, Doug Mitchell, he we met earlier this year and like first of the year, very first of the year. And you know, it's funny. A lot of my relationships right now came about quick, like out of nowhere. And Doug and I just met, clicked. And we've been doing life together ever since. We had a trip to Mexico together and um, see him in Dallas monthly. And just an amazing story, amazing journey. I'm excited to have Doug on here today. Uh, Doug is the CEO of Argenta. It's a direct sales organization that offers AT&T and solar uh, products. He's a husband first and foremost and a father. He's a consultant. His specialty is building sales teams. And he's got a dope podcast called Building Great Sales Teams. So we got Doug with us this morning what's going on doug what's going on brother uh it's an man, honor to be great. honor to be on your podcast here man man thanks for joining me i'm really excited about it um before we jump in too deep i gotta tell everybody so doug's podcast is not only amazing but he's mobile also when he needs to be so tell everybody about the trailer the podcast trailer yeah this thing is is really sweet so it must have been about I don't know, four or five months ago, uh, Patrick Bolanos, I don't know if you've had him on your show yet, but uh, Not yet. Patrick, Patrick Bolanos put a picture of a podcast trailer that he was working on in our uh, Facebook group. And I was like, man, the thing is sweet. You know, I, I was about, I want to say like 15 episodes in or so. Yeah. And I was like, man, it would be so awesome to be able to drive that thing up to Dallas, just hit up all my Apex buddies for for podcasts. But not not only that, you know, MDM and all the different events that we have going on. And then, yeah. yeah, like my office here in San Antonio, it's, it's wide open. Right. So the uh, sound quality is not good. Obviously if I have a bunch of people in the office bouncing off the walls. Sure. So I like, I, I like the idea of having a controlled studio. So anytime I, I interview anybody locally, I can just pull up the, the podcast studio and go, you know, that's awesome. The cameras are all set up. There's three angles. Um, and of course, there's a roadcaster in there, and there's a couple of chairs. The background's awesome, and I don't know if you've been seeing some of the promo stuff we've been putting out for different yeah. episodes and stuff, but it's coming out clean. That's and, cool. Uh, pretty, pretty excited about it. So, Patrick put this out there, and, and he's like, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start a little side hustle with this. You know, I'm gonna let people record in it, charge them a fee or whatever." Sure. And so I reached, I reached out to him, and I was like, "Are you going to be selling these? Like, are you going to be producing these or whatever?" And he's like, "Yeah." And I said, "I tell you what, I'll buy this one right here and right now if you if you give me the one you're currently working on because I know he right. has like a six month wait on all of his yeah. stuff, you know." Yeah. And so he agreed to it. So I was able to get it. We used it at MDM. We shot seven episodes plus. We shot a bunch of my salespeople and stuff. So we've just been using the the crap out of it every every time we can and it's it's been awesome that's really cool i love it i thought it was really unique thought it was super smart and it's perfect you know for you and particularly being in san antonio you can just mm-hmm. run up the road run up the road i mean what is it, like five hours to dallas probably yeah four, four and a half, four and half yeah. five hours yeah so you know but still super doable and you can make great use of it and then you know other purposes as well so really cool re- really unique did patrick do the rap on it also yeah his i mean I think he outsources that, but uh, yeah, his, they did it all in house. Yeah. It's amazing. And so for those of you who don't know, and we'll get Patrick on here for sure, but he, he is <laughs> the trailer King and he, it's, mm-hmm. it's food trucks and trailers and obviously podcast trailers, but it's yeah. incredible stuff. You got to check him out on Instagram. It's really, really cool. And it's one of the things I really love about his business and watching his story and their growth over the last several years is literally he's helping people take these visions and these dreams, you know, and, and flip them into a reality. And people, some people had restaurants, you know, going into to COVID, you know, and then they, they had to shut down or whatever reason. And they went mobile. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Some of them have a little food cart or something like that, or they're just slinging stuff out of coolers, you know, (laughs) in the back of their truck. And they have this vision and he takes it and, and brings it to reality. Yeah. And they're Amazing. so unique and they're so specialized. What a, what a cool thing to do, you know, day in and day out. Pretty well. I don't 
don't know if you've ever visited his shop, but Not I mean, they, they literally bring in the pipe, you know what I'm saying? And they built those yep. things from the ground up. There's not they're a piece of that. Yeah, they're fabricating the whole thing. It's so cool to watch him work, too. He's got a lot of talented people in there, for sure. That's amazing. So, look, so, Doug, um, sorry I ran us straight down the rabbit hole of the podcast. <laughs> it's trailer, good, it's on my mind, man. <laughs> Tell us about, you know, you. Who, who's Doug Mitchell? Who's everybody hearing from today? So, I'm I'm your typical, like, could not hold on to a job when I was younger. Uh you know, just, to, I'm not a good employee. Right. And so right when I got into the workforce, when I was 18, I moved from San Antonio, Texas to Corpus Christi with about 200 bucks and my Ford Ranger that was paid off. You know, my, my aunt was just kind of like my mom had given it to me. And, uh, from then on for the next like 18 months, I must've went through like 11 or 12 different positions, got fired from most of them for telling the, the manager or the supervisor or the boss how to do his job. And then I finally landed, I finally landed uh, working in real estate. And the way that I did that is I was doing mobile detailing. I had my own little mobile detailing business. Yeah. And uh, I actually had a FedEx contract with that, surprisingly enough. But <laughs> um, anyways, I was... FedEx truck tightened up? Yeah, I was uh, cleaning all the FedEx trucks as they came in at the end of the day. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And so that, that kind of paid the bills. And then all the mobile detailing was the extra money, right? And so I was, I was detailing for this realtor in town and I didn't know it at the time, but he was the biggest realtor in town. Right. And I was detailing his, uh, BMW 550i or, or okay. LI. Right. So this is like the, the big wide body whale yep. looking car. Right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I guess he liked my hustle cause he, he, you know, asked if I was interested in a, in a position with his company. And so basically I was going to be able to do the mobile detailing and handle that position at the same time. It was like right. entry level photography for the houses and then putting up signs and all that good stuff. And, and so that was kind of my first time working for an entrepreneur and kind of being able to see him work. And every now and then I would drive him places and stuff like that. I was a gopher. They needed to yeah. run contracts. You know, I was doing everything that was inconvenient basically. Sure. And so, uh, a couple of months into it, I got an opportunity. Their marketing manager was quitting. He had already taught me how to do some stuff on the computer with the marketing and everything. So he kind of put me through a two week crash course. And then I was the marketing manager for 300 listings with his real oh, estate wow. company. Okay. So yeah, he was all about like training from the ground up, you know, obviously you get them cheaper that way. <laughs> yeah. Sure. And so, uh, so that was kind of, you know, my introduction to marketing. And so I learned how to do all that stuff. I worked for him, I want to say for about two years. And then he moved over to Houston, started, started uh, leasing, uh, leasing and building high rises. Oh, wow. Big, big success over in Houston. And uh, so he laid me off and I stayed in Corpus Christi, right? And so I, I started doing my own marketing then, which um, brought me across the desk of my previous partner, uh, which ended up hiring me as a marketing manager, right? And he had a sales organization. Uh, he had about four or five different businesses, but one of them was collectible gold sales. And so okay. I did the newspaper campaigns for that. And that was a that was a crazy business, you know? So we would advertise one ounce of bullion gold, right? And then these people that were interested in that would call in, they would get their ounce, and then we would upsell them on collectible gold. So it was kind of okay. like... Not really a bait and switch because you could get your one ounce, right? Sure. But they yeah. always they always try to upsell them on, you know, like a mint state proof 70 set of American Eagles, you know. Right, right. So this is a whole whole other business that a lot of people don't know about, right? And it's just like baseball cards. They're graded, you know, they have intrinsic value and all that good stuff. So I started, you know, I did marketing for him and uh, I worked for him. I should say on and off because he did fire me once and then brought me back. <laughs> Apparently taking hey, 30, so we're 000, tracking, right? We're staying yeah, we're tracking show. right on point here. <laughs> Apparently taking thirty thousand dollars worth of gold out of the office to get it photographed and then bringing it back. Oh yeah, is is frowned upon. I could have been jacked, I guess. You know who knew? Who knew? <laughs> you know, I was I was twenty two and I was just figuring it out. You know. Oh hell yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and so. Uh, I, I did a lot of cool things at that company, but you know, the most important thing is I worked for a serial entrepreneur and I saw him operate and I kind of yeah. 
learned by osmosis from him. And then he would sit me down in his office and, and we'd walk through things and stuff like that. And he would be uh, pouring into me at different levels. So I learned a lot what to do and what not to do from him. You know, his, uh, I always noticed his relationships with his top salespeople were always strained, you know? And so I did my best to insulate those relationships and make sure that they um, were uh, conducive to the bottom line of the company. Right. Sure. Yeah. And so a- after a while, one of his salespeople convinced him to start Argenta Field Solutions, which was a, a dealership for AT&T that did door-to-door sales, right? Okay. And his salesman dipped after like three months of managing it. You know, he got another person to manage it, didn't work out. So eventually he was like, well, Doug, why don't we give you a shot? You think you can manage a door-to-door sales company? I'm like, sure, why not? Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, about six months into it, I got it to black. We started making a little profit. I think it was like five grand a month, nothing crazy, right? And um, he decided he wanted to sell it. Uh, I was able to obtain owner financing from him to purchase it. Oh, that's awesome. And, uh, you know, three years later, you know, we did $5 million in commissions with AT&T. And I think at the time we were doing uh, ADT as well. Okay. And I had over uh, 110 salespeople. Wow. So that was from 23 to 26 years old. So that okay. was a bit of a wild ride. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you were blowing hard to take it from, you know, after six months, five grand a month profit mm-hmm. to putting five million plus up in commissions a year. I mean, yeah, when I, when I took over, we had one manager in Houston and then no salespeople because I had just fired them all because they were all like, smoking right. weed every day in the car instead of knocking doors. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. And so I had to figure all that out. They and might have so, been selling something, but not what you were. Putting. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> and so I had to get rid of all of them and just start from scratch. And, I mean, the first, so, you know, one of the, the things in the sales world is, right, you always lead from the front. The the Typically, the leader is the best salesperson in the group, but that was that was never really me. Yeah. I, I sold for three months. I nailed down a script. I nailed down uh, training. I understood what it took to train a new salesperson. So I did that. And then I was able to promote one of them to trainer. And so now they did the training and now I was able to actually manage the office. You know, yeah. of course I was doing everything. I was doing payroll, taxes, uh, operations, you know, dealing with the client, escalations, reconciles, right. all that good stuff. Right. And then I was doing the, the, mar- the daily meetings, the sales meetings and all that. And then uh, shortly shortly after that, I met Wayne Skinner. He was a seasoned manager, brought him into the fold. And uh, that's when we started really scaling and really blowing nice. it up. So that's awesome. And so that that's up, that ran you through 23 to 26. That's when you really made that big gap. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And so during that time, family guy, right? Mm-hmm. How many kids did you have during that time? Three during that time, actually. Three. Funny story. Whenever I decided I wanted to buy the business, I brought it to my brand new wife with my three month old daughter at the time. And, you know, she was just starting to get a paycheck for teaching. Yeah. And, uh, uh, oh no, because she, yeah, she was in between. Well, yeah, she was getting a check already. And so she, you know, we're talking, we're pillow talk or whatever. And we're, we're talking about it. And she looks over at me dead serious and was like, I don't want you to do this. You have a good yeah. job right now. You got a steady paycheck. We got a three month old daughter. I'm, we're finally going to get a, a little bit ahead. You know right, what I mean? Right. And, uh, and so then I went in the next day and I told Troy, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, that's so funny because I think about, you know, back in, in the day I say it, uh-huh. uh, you know, real estate and finance was my background and, I was a mortgage loan officer and Mm -hmm. paid attention to everything that was always going on and got a wild hair. I'm like, man, I can do this on my own. You know, I'll start my own shop and then do this. And, and we did. And I remember similar, similar conversations, similar period of time with Devin. Mm -hmm. And we had just bought a a new house. We had, um, she was teaching at the time. She was pregnant with our son, Logan. Um, and I'm like, babe, I think it's time for us to go out on our own. She's like, wait, huh? What? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I, I think it's a good time. And everybody 
everybody. I mean, you know the deal. Everyone's like, yeah. man, you can't do that. You got a wife. You're about to have a baby. You just got this house. You know, mm-hmm. you can't do all these things. She never told me that. I mean, she she was hesitant. She yeah. was concerned and nervous. And I'm kind of like you. It's just like the blinders are on. And mm-hmm. I'm dialed in and focused on just the task at hand. And I was like, hey, we know the task. We know the route. We may not know all the steps necessary, but we're going to figure that out. We're confident in how young and dumb, right? Yeah. Uh, during those times. But I don't know. I think some of the best lessons we got in life were because we were young and dumb, um, unfortunately. But maybe fortunately, you know, it, it yeah. just depends on on how you look at it. But that was the same similar time. And um, we made the decision. I quit that job where we were killing it. And mm-hmm. we figured it out. And it was great until it wasn't, right? (laughs) It was awesome until it wasn't. And then I had to figure it out because it was kind of like a big old F you from everybody who's like, we told you so. You know, now what? We told you not to do that. We told you to just go get that safe job. We told you to keep that opportunity, you know, not make that risk. You got a family, you got this and that. So, So talk a little bit about that, you know, how, so you go do it anyway, yeah. Right. And then, it, and obviously you're having success on the business side. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, how, how does that trajectory go? Not well, unfortunately. <laughs> so I'm, I'm having all the success on the business side. Right. And so from, from a young age, I had a chip on my shoulder. You know, my dad wasn't really around. He, he was an alcoholic passed away when yeah. I was 18 or 19 and um, I maybe spent one or two summers with him and my, my grandmother mainly took care of me. Okay. And so uh, my mom also, you know, I had somewhat of a normal childhood, you know, early on. And then somewhere right. around, around middle school, my sister got pregnant. Uh, my mom and my stepdad were in the middle of uh, a se- separation and eventual divorce. And so uh, my aunt kind of plucked me out of there, right? Okay. And th- and then just to make a long story short, my mom didn't really, you know, she called me. He's like, okay, this is what we're doing. All right. And she was okay with it. You know what I mean? Right. Now, when I think right. about today and I think about my three kids, you know what I mean? Someone right. saying, hey, one, e- any one of them saying, hey, I'm going to go live with uh, my Thea, you know, <laughs> it's like, right, right. I would lose my shit. <laughs> well, yeah. Saying? And so dad was, dad was, I know he passed, you know, late mm-hmm. teens, but he was out of the picture early on. Yeah, I mean, he was a he was a truck driver. Your your st- typical stereotype Texas boy drove trucks. Yeah. You know what I mean. Uh, yep. Had a bunch of kids everywhere. That type okay. of deal. So, uh, so yeah. So I had a chip on my shoulder. You know these these people that were supposed to want me didn't want me. My aunt, you know, kind of taught me responsibility, taught me how to be an adult and everything. But she, I mean, obviously she can't fill that void, right? Sure. Yeah. And so it kind of drove me early on to prove that, you know, and then I saw my extended family, aunts, uncles, and cousins and all that. And everybody's just kind of like accepting average, right? Right. And so I didn't want to be like them, you know, and I and I knew I had something special. I didn't know what it was. I knew I was going to be different, right? Okay. And I just, maybe it was just the chip on my shoulder telling me that, right? And so um, I attacked, you know, the business and I attacked being you know, working for these other people, you know, I was always kind of an incredibly hard worker and I put everything I had into my business. Sure. And so when I had success, it was like, okay, I accomplished this. You know what I mean? I've got the, the, the thriving business. I've got the, the wife and three kids, the perfect family. You know what I'm saying? I uh, played rugby at the time, did well in rugby. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so like I'm accomplishing all these things and then, you know, it's just not enough you know, not being content. Right. And so at the time I was traveling the country, I had 13 offices nationwide and, uh, you know, I did what every cliche successful, you know, businessman does. And I uh, was unfaithful in my marriage, you know? Okay. And so I played that game for about two years. Um, and, uh, well, like a year and a half or so. And then, you know, I got involved in, uh, my wife's uncle's church. Right. Okay. And so through that, I was convicted. And one day I was standing on the, the, the church stage or whatever, and I was supposed to give my testimony. And I had a, a strong conviction from God that, Hey, you can't be up here giving this testimony. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you're right. doing what yeah. you're doing, you know, when you're traveling for business, you know, I was able to compartmentalize everything. 
Yeah. So somehow I was able to attend church, pray all these things and still be doing what I was doing when I was going out of town. Cause that was when I was out of town, right? It's a separate thing. Yeah. And so it was something from my, my child. I was able to compartmentalize my mom, compartmentalize my dad, you know what I mean? Compartmentalize my sister so that I could operate and I could function like a normal human being, you know what I'm saying? In the moment, in the, in the moment. So I did the same things when I got, when I got older as an adult and, uh, so I was convicted. I finally stopped doing that stuff. And, and so life got a lot better for the next year and a half. The business had its up and downs. It struggled. I pretty much stayed in sure. between two, 2.5 and 3.5 million for five years after that. Right. And, um, you know, I was able to do a lot of different things in business and, and, and doing well and everything. But, you know, what, what was noticeable is my family life got so much better. You know, I was able to actually start being present with my kids and start pouring into my relationship with my wife. Right. But I still hadn't told her everything that I did. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think this was back in 18, near the end of 18. um, She came across an old email. There wasn't a whole lot of incriminating stuff in it. But at the end of the day, I was holding on to all this stuff. So I just let it all loose on her all at once. I told her everything, you know. And uh, obviously, any, even the strongest women aren't ready for that. You know no, I mean? absolutely. Yep. And so we separated, um, eventually divorced, but we were really good co-parents. You know, we kept the, the, the kids 50-50. Yep. I did everything I could to make sure that they were set up, made sure I made my payments on time, did not go through the, 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 the state child support office or anything like that. I wasn't going to have right. the state tell me to take care of my family, right? Right, yeah. And absolutely. so... Over the next couple of years, you know, we attempted to reconcile a few times. And uh, uh, after about three years, she was in a relationship. I was in a relationship and she was praying one night and got her conviction from God. You know what I mean? That that she wasn't happy in her current relationship and that she was still in love with me and that she had finally forgiven me, you know? Wow. And once she did that, the blinders were off, the veil was lifted, you know what I mean? But I was still in a relationship. And so I had been through this a few times. So I was like, okay, you're not going to trick me again into this. You know what I mean? Every time I try and come back, you shut me out, you know, because you hadn't forgiven me yet. So I didn't, I didn't believe her. So I continued on my relationship, which eventually didn't work out. And then a couple of months after that, she asked me on a date to a a wedding. And I was like, ah, what could it hurt? Right. And, uh, and she was wearing this dress and she still wears it every now and then. And she was just a, a smoke show that night and it was over for me. <laughs> you were it done. was over. I was done. She had, you know, and she had waited six months. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd basically broken up with her boyfriend at the time. You know what I mean? And, and hadn't dated or anything for six months waiting, waiting for me, you yeah. know? So, which was a huge testament in itself to the, wow. the, the power of her faith and then the, the power of the love that she had for me, even after, everything that I had done. Right. Yeah. And so when we did come back together, it was like fireworks again. And so we, uh, in about 26 days, we'll be getting, uh, remarried. Yeah. That's so amazing, man. Like I, I love that story. I love the journey. Um, Mm -hmm. I love that I got to, to witness the proposal. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, you, know, you know, so I mentioned at the start of the podcast that Doug and I and uh, a group of friends and friends now at this point, a lot of them, we had no clue who the heck they were when we got. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's some really, really just solid, amazing relationships that were formed out of that. And and ours got stronger. And, you know, I, I got to meet Alicia for the first time. And, and that mm-hmm. was great. And I remember you telling me when we first got there, you're like, dude. I'm proposing while we're here and I'm sitting here like, <laughs> Oh hell yes. Like, this is great. I'm looking around and guys, you got to know, like, I'll just try to set this up for you as best as possible. And sure. maybe, maybe Jonathan, um, and you don't got to jump on the mic, Jonathan, I'm going to send you some pictures of this. So when this show launches, maybe we can overlay them in the video mm. and show people are watching. But the, one of the houses we had, what, three, four houses there in Cabo. Yeah, I think it was four houses total. Yeah, and there's these beautiful homes that we rented for the weekend, and um, you know, on the cliffs of Pettigrew in in Cabo, overlooking Cabo and the ocean. It's just the the scene is 
unimaginable unless I, you're in it. It still right. doesn't look real when I look at pictures and video of it. I'm no. like, no way you're there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just, and this is someone's normal. It wasn't my normal, but hey, I was willing to to be a part of it for a bit. But they ended up setting up just this beautiful scene, and we'll, and we'll post some pictures here, but it just was, there were probably, what, 40 of us? you know, there yeah, like and that, yeah. um, music's playing and, you know, you walk her up and there's beautiful flowers and candles everywhere. And, you know, it just, man, you freaking proposed. We knew it was a done deal and how embarrassing, man, how bad would it have been if it was like, <laughs> mm, nah, I'm still thinking about you, Joker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> after I just, me. after I just took her to Cabo was already, we were already living together for a year. She's like, yeah, ah, yeah. Like, you yeah. know what? Nah, we, we could have done this at <laughs> home. We don't need to do this right here. But no, dude, it was really special and it was amazing. And to see, like, the love you guys have for your ch- for each other is amazing. And I think y'all's story is super inspiring on that part. And your kids are awesome. And you know the the work that you guys put into each other is awesome. It's very evident, and you see it. And it's a it's an honor to know you guys and and to share that little part that little moment of your guys' journey is is super special for me and I know for everybody else who was there too. Yeah, it really was, and I I appreciate that. Um, you know, and I and I wouldn't I wouldn't be okay if I didn't you know talk about the impact that Apex had on that. You know, yeah. And it's because I was surrounded by all these amazing men like yourselves and all the other men that uh, we're surrounded by and they're telling me kind of their strategies for life, you know? Yeah. And uh, whether it's like, okay, I don't need to go to this after hours thing, you know what I mean? Or it's uh, I'm going to fly home, you know, on the red eye just so I can, you know, I can get one less night away from home, you know, just all these different strategies that they gave me, you know, and following the G code and doing 75 par, all these disciplines, because, you know, being single and and being out in you know the world <laughs> without your family with you half the time you right. lose all your you do you lose all your discipline you lose your motivation and so um you know when i joined apex i was able to dial that stuff back in and i was yeah, able to do awesome. that work with her and get back to that place and and of course you know i tell so you know as you know when we go to these masterminds our time is very limited to do anything right. but you know, the mastermind events, right? Yeah. We have plenty of times to network and stuff like that. And we don't want to miss any of that. Sure. But I had kind of called Tyler and I was like, Hey, and, and Tyler Dozier, he's, he's the one that, you know, puts on all this stuff and plans everything. He's uh, Ryan Steumann's, uh event coordinator. And I'm sure he has some fancy title now because he just pulled off one of the biggest masterminds in history, but yeah, the guy's uh, a <laughs> he's a legend now. <laughs> We're just going to call him legend. That's right. Um, but anyway, I, I reach out to him. I'm like, um, hey, I just wanted you to know, I don't want to detract from the event, but we're probably not going to be at the dinner. Uh, I think it was Saturday night. Yeah. We're probably not going to be at the dinner Saturday night because I'm going to slip away and I'm going to propose to Alicia. You know, he knew her, our whole story and everything. Right. And uh, he was like, okay, let me get back to you. And I'm like, no, 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 Tyler. Like, I'm not asking you all to do anything. Right. <laughs> you yeah. know, I, I, I don't want y'all to spend a dollar on anything. I just, you know, uh, wanted to let you know because I'm not not proposing in Cabo. You know right. I mean? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. All we got to do is go down the beach and we got this amazing setting or whatever. I was going to yeah. hire a local photographer and, uh, you know, coordinate it that way. So I was asking him for some contacts and stuff. And so maybe like two hours later, he's like, we got you. I talked to Ryan. We're going to take care of the whole thing. Don't worry about it. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, I feel, <laughs> I feel so guilty. You know right. I mean? Yeah. And then we get there and I'm, and Tyler pulls me over and I'm talking to him about it. It's like, dude, y'all really don't need to do all this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to detract from the mastermind. Yeah. You know, I just felt like it would be like, oh, look at me, you know? And, and he sits me down and he's like, look, you went through this journey with us and you said it yourself that Apex was a big part of y'all coming back together. So we just want to share this with you. You yeah. know what I mean? And so um, once he kind of explained it to me that way, then I was like, okay, let's, let's do it. And they knocked it out of the park. I mean, all you have to do is see the one picture of me proposed and you're like, Oh my gosh, you know, Doug just ruined it for the rest of us. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) If we we still got to propose. (laughs) I I was hesitant to tell my wife about that. We just celebrated 20 (laughs) years last week and um, two weeks ago, I'm sorry. And two weeks ago today. 
because two of our dearest friends, they got married two weeks after us. And mm-hmm. one of them's out in Catalina Island in California celebrating their 20th today. And the others are mm-hmm. up in um, Nantucket celebrating this weekend. And, you know, so 20 years ago, though, you know, we got married and um, my proposal was not as grand. I will tell you that right now. Oh. I think about it and I'm like, what in the hell is going on? Like, <laughs> I, I think about how I did that and what I did. And good thing she just saw potential in me. I mean, God, I don't want to lose her. It was so, it was shameful. We were, um, we, so for our 20th, um, I, I got her a, a band, a, a new band okay. to commemorate. And it's, it's a very pretty ring, very mm-hmm. beautiful. And she was very excited about it. She's never really wanted me to mess with the original configuration and stone and all that. The good ones are like and, that. So yeah, man, you know, yeah. that's it. And so I got this new band and I'm looking at this band and I'm like, holy crap. Like there's several stones in this new band. There's quite a few stones in this new band. And I'm like, oh my gosh, her original solitaire, like the one stone is the uh, size of one of these in this band that she's wearing. And I'm like, well, that's a decent kind of, you know, upgrade there babe this is all right i said see improvement improvement hopefully we're getting better that's getting better mm-hmm. you know everything's growing but it's just funny because i look at it and i remember that time vividly uh uh-huh. and i remember that proposal and i remember that engagement and i i think about the highs over the 20 years and i also <laughs> think about the the lows and where we've had issues and, and ran into things but we're always on this path and and journey trying to work together to improve and grow and, and figure it out. And it's just, it's like the process, you know, 20 years doesn't come easy. Two years doesn't come easy. You know, it's a process and everybody's just got to be, be on it together. Right. One of those things. Oh, we got Jonathan. Is he muted on our end or on Doug's? Yeah. Sorry. Oh, Oh, there we go. We got you. My, uh, my and I'm I'm assuming y'all can cut this if y'all need to. My battery is getting low for whatever reason. My adapter's not working. So. Oh, weird. We got you. We'll figure it out. Nine percent. No worries. Um. So yeah. So the apex piece is super interesting with how it plays in, and it's like, hey, you know, we've we've been through this journey with you, and and you know, we're a part of this end, and it nobody felt a distraction at all, brother. Like it was like your family was there with you. And it was mm-hmm. just, it was an incredibly, you know, powerful moment and it's really cool to see. So what'd you say? 27 days, 26 days. Yeah. Uh, so July 25th, which is a Monday, we'll go okay. uh, back to Corpus Christi where we originally got uh, married and uh, we'll do a small ceremony at our old church there with our old pastor that originally married us. Oh man. And that's then, awesome. And then uh, July 30th, we're going to do a barbecue in the hill country. And cool. uh, basically, we're gonna have a party and you know invite all of our family and friends and celebrate the That's cool. um, reunion. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah. So it's funny you were talking about like with these masterminds that you're a part of, and we're we share, you know, um, being a part in a couple, and there's a couple that we're not in together. Uh-huh. But one of the point that you made that I think is really key for people to to think about in their own lives and personal lives, it's like there's seasons where you can you can go hard like that, and you can you know, do that extended day and drop meetings on the front end or the the back end of the masterminds or uh-huh. things like that. But there's certain times too, where you got to know, Hey, I've got to, you were talking about getting that red eye. So you have one less night, yeah. you know, away, you know, I fly out. Are you going to be in Dallas Friday? Yeah, I'll be in yeah. uh, down, okay. or Fort Worth. Fort Worth. Yeah. That's where we're yeah. going this time. So I'll fly in. I think I get in 845 tomorrow night. I'm not leaving mm-hmm. Virginia till 530. Yeah, and then I'll walk out of the meeting in Fort Worth on Friday. And I'm straight to the airport. Yeah, I fly out at seven. I'm back in my bed by midnight, and you know, with my wife and you know, yeah. and my son. My daughter's out in California with with Grammy. But um, you know, that's earlier in the year. The first four months of the year, no, I was out there for three or four days, saying you know, doing yeah. podcasts, doing meetings, you know, mm-hmm. new projects that we're working on, and I was like, okay, this is. This is pushing a little hard, right? You know, let, let me dial back. We came out with my wife for the first time um, for MDM and we brought a bunch of the team. So we were out there for almost a week that week because we had a lot of stuff built around it, but she was with me. So it was yeah. great. Um, you know, but this is a quick trip. 
August. I think we've got Apex Live the day before. So I'll be out for a couple of days and mm-hmm. we're looking at trying to, I might have the Devin and the kids may come out a couple of days after uh, that Friday because we actually nice. just got a we actually got a condo out there in Frisco. And so move in day is that same weekend. So um I'm going to bring them out to check it out because the kids haven't even seen it yet. So we'll get them a spot to to check out. But it's like I'm trying to figure out, hey, how can I incorporate them into this time mm-hmm. and have them involved so it's not just me gone all the time? Even though they get it and they understand and supportive, but if I start feeling like this is getting too normal, that's when for me I know, hey, I got to dial it back. Right. And I need some more of that time at home. And and you kind of went through a similar process the last month or two. Mm-hmm. Talk about mm-hmm. that a little bit, because I think people just get stuck in the in the race and push, 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 right. push. And they let other things fall to the wayside. So do you mind talking about that a little bit? Yeah, I thought absolutely. Some stuff you shared on social was really important. So, you know, there's a lot to unpack there. But basically, once I started getting into uh, Apex and and masterminds in general and just around all all of a sudden I had all these like-minded people around me and I hadn't had them my whole life you know yeah and um I'm I'm 36 years old now so I I I found Apex when I was 35 you know about 15 years too late right (laughs) so I don't even think it was around back then but I I wasn't around a lot of other business owners you know and I never got to scratch that itch so when I finally did and I found MDM 21 right and I joined Apex I was all in And I mean, all in, and I went to everything, right? Every live event, every fly in Friday, you know, the goon squad had events. I did, uh, apex evolution, you know, and I did, uh, a few private flights with Ryan Stuman and, and, and his crew. And so, um, I was constantly, you know, I I had one six week period a couple months ago where I was traveling six weeks in a row, Yeah, you know, and about three months into all this six months of just crazy travel in the beginning of 22, um, I had already been feeling it. I was like, wait a second, you know, I'm not home running my business. I'm not home pouring into my family enough. Right. Yeah. And so I decided the last six months of, of 22, I would, I would get rid of a lot of the, the stuff that I had planned and then start doing that type of stuff. Like we talked about earlier, you know, yeah. You know, flying Fridays, I typically, you know, we've got the the dinner this Thursday or whatever, and I wanted to be there for that. But I, I typically fly fly in the the morning of and yep. leave that evening. Yeah, I don't, I don't have one night away from home, right? I'm also in an RB, RBO mastermind, and same thing there. I fly in as late as possible and leave as early as possible, right? Right. And and I just made a commitment to Alicia and the kids that I wouldn't be traveling so much. Now, I also had to make sure that they were aligned with what I was doing. They needed to understand, hey, when when dad goes on these trips, he's either working, you know, like MDM was, I was working the whole time. Oh, I yeah. barely got to sit in the seat, you know what I mean? Because we were <laughs> handing out energy drinks, we were recruiting, right. you know, we were uh, qualifying people for solar, you know, we were doing all kinds of stuff. And I was doing podcasts and everything. And, and luckily, luckily, Alicia was, about, was able to come in and uh, spend some of that time with me as well and experience that too. But anyways, I had to make sure my, my kids were aligned and that they knew when I was leaving, you know, just like they go to school, I go to school, right? right. And that's why I fly out every, every month, once a month or twice a month, sometimes when it's the RBO mastermind as well. And, you know, I show them the pictures and I help them understand how this helps me uh, be a better leader in my business, yep. you know? And so there's two things there. There's alignment. And then there's also just not overdoing it. Like you said earlier, where right. you're, you're out of town three or four nights every month. And then we also have our own, I mean, you have several locations, you know what I mean? I have two offices. Right. I have to go to Corpus. I have to go to Houston. Yep. And um, so it's on top of all that travel as well, you know, yeah. and, and it'll wear on any family, the strongest family. So you got to make sure 100%. the alignment's there and that the travels that the travel is absolutely limited. And then you're also keeping your disciplines when you're traveling. You know, I yeah. find it's actually easier for me to keep my disciplines when I'm traveling because when I'm home, I want to, you know, watch movies with the kids and stay yeah. too late with the wife. You know what I mean? So it's like, I find when I'm traveling, I actually dial it, dial it in a little more. 
Oh man, good for you because I'm the exact opposite of that. <laughs> like we had, I had a like a seven, eight week stretch similar to what you were talking about mm -hmm. where I'm in Detroit, I'm in Milwaukee, I'm in San Antonio, I'm in Austin, mm -hmm. I'm in Dallas, I'm in Virginia, I'm back to Dallas, San Antonio. I mean, I'm all over the place, all work. And it's like, and this was, this was May timeframe into April, into May. And I just, I had come into this year and really hit a really good routine. And then all these trips and it was messing me up. I'm still getting to the gym, but it wasn't right. Yeah. I'm still trying to do stuff. It's not right. And I'm very like systematic. So when mm -hmm. I'm here, it's like, okay, I'm eating this at this time. I'm eating that. Like right. everything's just ready. I have not mastered that on the road yet. And that's one of the reasons why we got the place in Frisco is like when I'm there, I just want I, I just want it to be like my normal. It's like my here right. in Virginia, boom, it's there. I'm gonna have the same type of food sitting in the fridge. I'm gonna have mm -hmm. it, it's done. And we just signed up a, a handful of our team into entrepreneurs. And so they're nice. gonna be coming out quarterly. And so we're actually throwing on a, a all my head trainers and stuff are gonna be a part of that. And mm -hmm. so they'll come out, you know, quarterly. That's when they have their meetings. We have our monthly meetings. But I'll be going out on their quarterly meetings also, but we're going to be bringing, since everybody from around the country is going to be in one spot, we're going to throw in quarterly quarterly head trainer meetings and nice. do those like the day before. Yeah. But now it's helped to keep the routine. It's a space that I can enjoy with the family also. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not the hotel grind, you know, right. all the time. And it, But it's figuring out what works for you, what works with your family. One of the things mm -hmm. you shared was, Hey, I'm sharing stuff with my kids. This is, there's pictures of people I'm eating stuff. I'm, yeah. I'm doing things. I'm learning. This is how it helps me. And that's a huge part. You know, if you, I feel like you're, you're missing a big opportunity there with your family. If you're not doing that, because all the kids see is something's more important than right. me. Yeah. And so it, Whereas if you can help bring it around to that why and they have buy-in and understand now they're, mm -hmm. they, they might not always feel excited about it when you go, but when you get back, they're excited, but it's, Hey, what did you learn? Yeah. Who, did you, did you, did you meet anybody cool? Like, mm -hmm. did you, you know, who, what did you get to experience? And yeah. that's what my kids are a little older, a good amount older than yours. My son will be 18 in December, you know, Kiki's 15. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll ask that. So, so what was this one about? Who was the who was the speaker, you know, this right. time or, you know, what were the what were the challenges or, you know, they're just thinking about it from a different a different way. But they understand why it's important to us as a unit that we go and do this. Mm -hmm. And I want hell, I want Logan to get involved as soon as he graduates. You know, I want him to start coming out and and doing the deal and and being around it and, and a part of it. I just think it's so important to to get that outside influence from people who are ahead of you. Yeah. You know, absolutely. It's not the same path necessarily, but winning's winning. <laughs> and you know, it, it doesn't matter what game you're playing. Winning's winning. And it, it you got it. You have to get around those people. You just have to do it. Well, and there's so many types of people with so many different skills Yep, and they've all, are they're all lean, especially in executives. I think we see it more than the other groups just because, you know, the, the fee to get in, right. They're sure. all leaning into their passions and they're not wasting yep. time with stuff. They're not good at. They're not wasting time living a life that, that doesn't, doesn't f fulfill them. Yeah. Agreed. You know, and hopefully our kids see that with us, but for them to see it from a hundred, 200 other like-minded people just opens up a world of possibilities. Yeah. You know, yeah. it doesn't have to be, you know, this certain route or this certain skill or this certain way of life, you know what I mean? Or the certain exercise program or any of that, we're all doing different stuff, you know? Yep. And the, the thing that I think is so big about that with everybody's individual skills and being dialed in on what they're passionate on and not being distracted by everything else that's out there. Mm -hmm. um, I think a couple of years ago when I joined, that's what made it okay for me to just focus on the dogs. Yeah. You know, I feel like, man, I'm not really doing nothing. It's just these dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
we're doing something, you know, and it's okay. That, that shiny object, you know, syndrome. Oh, what's that? What's that? Yeah. And, but it doesn't matter. That's their wheelhouse. That's their passion. Right. That's, that's not mine. Now I appreciate the ones who created opportunities for me to be involved yeah. without having to worry about it. Without and, having to spend an hour on it. I love those. Yeah. Those I'm, are my I'm getting people. checks every, every month for those. I love those. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and so I was talking to somebody the other day, I'd posted something and my buddy messaged me and goes, um, he's like, what's this? I said, we might be in the chicken business. He's like, man, shut the hell up. I knew anytime you post something obscure like this, and he was referencing me and another friend of ours, he goes, anytime you and him post something, I'm like, man, what are they messing with right now? And it's just, you know, don't have to worry about it. Let the experts worry about it and do yeah. their thing. And it's a, it's from those relationships though, right? Yeah. And putting yourself out there and learning and having conversations and and connecting and always looking to strive. You know, strive yeah, strive to, to grow. I just got back from Utah and I was at the uh, RBO Mastermind. And there's yeah. only there's only 25 of us in it right now. They just opened it back up and I think they're going to get it to 50 before the next quarter. But oh, cool. They're, they're being super picky about it. And I appreciate it. Um, but they were we were at Wags Capital, right? Oh, and yeah. And that's where the, our first day meeting was. And then and then the next day we were at Wags Airplane Hangar. That's where our second day meeting was. And they were kind of telling the story of how they met WAGS, which was through through Arate. And then it was this okay. like a group of only a hundred that had to pay, oh, I think it was like a hundred grand to get in. Yeah. And and they they've since gotten rid of that group, but um they were talking about how they didn't even do any business with them initially, but it was like a year later that they started doing investments with them, you know? Right. And it, and it was very much that thing, like you said, hey, hey, here's, here's my money. You're the expert. You know yep. what I mean? You go make it happen and then you get a check, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and your, your money grows, you know? And How so was I'm, that? How's that headquarters? Oh, like it's capital. amazing. <laughs> the, the, the art he's got on the wall alone, the pictures were so cool. Yeah. And, you know, everybody was just, you know, you expect, and, and I'm still not getting used to this, right? You, you expect, you know, when you're a kid, you expect someone that makes them, you know, that grosses a million dollars a year to be a certain way. And yep. then you expect someone that, that does 50 million a year to be a certain way. And then you expect someone that does a hundred million a year to be a certain way. Well, it turns out once you start aligning yourself with people in apex or people in the RBO mastermind, it turns out all their friends are just as cool. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. and, it, and it really, I, I was sitting there watching wags. Uh, he came in, that morning he wasn't he wasn't part of our day that day he just came in to get his plane and fly out you know and it was a you know one of those little two-seater four-seater yep. planes but he flies it himself which yeah. is so cool you know so he walks in he's like changing the oil you know what i mean he's in basketball <laughs> shorts and tennis shoes you know just just hanging out he got some coffee with us or whatever and then you know he flies off to a meeting <laughs> yeah know? sure you know you gotta do what as one would do <laughs> yeah as naturally we all do when we got right. a meeting out of state you know? i don't count on myself to check the oil in my truck right you know i don't i'm the same I don't way know about that he was i'm he good was at finding all the, good people to do stuff yeah he was checking all his inst- and that's one of the things i appreciated so much i was just like man okay first off let's not front wags is rich as fuck right right yeah <laughs> so, absolutely yeah sure. and then he's sitting there like changing his oil in his plane i just appreciated that so much you know yeah cool. you can tell he genuinely enjoys that so that was oh it. yeah the the planes are a passion for sure um mm-hmm. uh, that's awesome that's cool then yeah I, I was following uh i was kind of having fomo on um social media seeing the as stuff we all do and, <laughs> and and what was going on so that was that was pretty cool i was glad to see that you were out there and doing that so look man i want to i want to honor your time we got a little bit of time left and we've been okay. talking family and life and stuff and it's amazing mm-hmm. um talk to us about you know what's going on with with the business what's your what's what are you excited about right now what what are you working on i mean i know that you're helping people develop their sales teams like that mm-hmm. is a a gift of yours you know it's mm-hmm. something how lucky are you to have be passionate about a gift that you have so many people don't have that and so that's great i know you've got that going on i know the business uh-huh. is growing uh, but but what's next what's got you fired up right now so you know i'll i'll be transparent here we uh so i got into the consulting heavy you know, I, I did it for free for a while just to figure out my process and my system, right? Yeah. Once I got that dialed in, then I started charging. And uh, 
I helped about four or five different people and their businesses and they're rolling now. Right. And, and fulfilled my obligations there. And then I had to stop because I realized that the solar side of my business was struggling a little bit on the ops side, which is my sure. specialty. Right. So I got in the ops, we got that rolling, you know, we're doing about 20 a month on the solar side, which is great. You know, we only started about nine months ago in, oh, in wow. solar at all. You know, before that it was all AT&T. And so, uh, you know, with the time left, I would like to to tell this little story here because it, it, it is incredibly important um, to, to, to what's going on with me right now. So I've been in the AT&T business for 12 years now, door to door. And then we switched over to a referral based model we call MDU. And all that is, is the salespeople, instead of going door to door, they go to the leasing agents in apartment complexes, develop okay. relationships with them, and then they get referrals from them. And then they yep. send them kickbacks for the referrals. And so it's, it's a great model and it's been working really well for us. And it's a low maintenance model. Uh, you know, Wayne and I were able to develop solar because MDU, uh, we had a director on that side and it was doing really well. Nice. And so, um, you know, un unfortunately I had to terminate that director a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And it's tough because when you give someone the reins like that, and then, and then all of a sudden you have to cut them loose. You're not developed in that business anymore. You know, right. You're not privy to the sales process necessarily. You know what I mean? You can pick it up and figure it out, which I'm doing right now. Yeah. Um, but that was a tough decision to make. Unfortunately, he was, you know, no longer living by our core values. Right. And uh, the one that he kind of stopped living by was operating with integrity. Yeah. And so, you know, unfortunately, we had to let go of him and another staff member because of some personal stuff that they had going on. And they, they did it in front of the company. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's yeah. married, so you can kind of tell what I'm getting at there. Yep. yep. And so without getting into that too much, you know, a couple of days later, we had to make, make that decision. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to take away the guy's livelihood. So I set him up with a contract with AT&T. So sure. he's doing that. And obviously... He recruited some of our salespeople from the MDU side. Sure. And I, and, I, and I told him straight up, it's like, if you want to go, go. You know, we have our core values here. We're going to live by them. And if, yep. if that's not an issue for you, then you go ahead, you know? Right. And so for the first time in a long time, and I'm literally this happened, some of this happened yesterday. For the okay. first time in a long time, I'm staring down the barrel of this division. And, you know, I'm going to have to go to my guys today and basically be like, hey, what do you guys want to do? Right. Because, you know, we basically lost 75% of our sales in the last two weeks, mm -hmm. our future sales. Right. Yep. And uh, we've got this solar division growing and everything. But what do you guys want to do? You know, because, you know, we have one top producer and the other two are just kind of doing average right now. Yeah. And so, you know, I guess what I wanted to point out is it's not all rainbows and sunshine when you when you operate by your core values and, and you truly believe in them, yeah. you know, when they're not just pretty pictures on a, or pretty words on a wall. And, and so now I'm dealing with, I probably just lost in the last couple, couple weeks here around on 700 to $800,000 annually yep. from that division because yep. I didn't, I didn't agree with what my director was doing and I didn't want it to be part of the company. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now I've got to go and grind and figure that part out. I've either got to go all in on solar or uh, I'm going to have to rebuild this division from scratch. And I, and uh, you know, too many times when I see posts about core values, you know, yeah, they say, Oh, it was tough for a little bit, but it got so much better after, you know, I hired and fired by core value. Right. No, I think I'm going to be in this for a while. <laughs> I think the yeah. next 90 days are going to be very, very trying for me. And, you know, no. I, I'd be, I'd be lying if I didn't say the last couple of days I questioned that decision. You know what I mean? To to cut him for loose. sure, brother. I mean that's tough. That's tough. But he, here's the thing: you know, if that's what you guys are about, though, this is not just what my company's about, but this is what I'm about. Yeah, it's going to cost seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars this year. Mm -hmm. The reality is, though, two years from now you make the same decision, it's going to cost you two to three million dollars. Right. You know, and so it. I think when it comes down to those non-negotiables, it sucks. It hurts. It does. But <laughs> the fact that you made that decision, though, just speaks to the type of guy that you are because 
you literally there was a million dollar price tag mm -hmm. on your values yeah and you said i'm not selling them i'm not doing it and you made the decision and for the people that see that and stick through this those are your people yeah you the know, ones you're that gonna, I, sorry, you might lose them you know for sure and they they were they weren't going to be there and get you where you're trying to go anyway unfortunately and that's what i keep coming back to uh you know i really do i keep coming back to that and understanding that and and i do have to give credit to to mark z my coach oh yeah because when i first called him about this i was on the fence i was 50 50 like let his personal life be his personal life or whatever or give him a another chance right so i probably should have done this a long time ago you know you sure. had said two years from now it would have cost me a lot more yeah. well i probably could have avoided it because i already knew some of this stuff was going on you know what i'm sure. saying but he was giving me lip service you know You're like, yeah. and i was believing him and, and so you want to give opportunity yeah you want to have grace you want to give opportunity to change because look you were given opportunity i've yeah. been given opportunity i know i have <laughs> but, but you got to do something with it yeah and so that's the whole deal too is i didn't used to operate this way you yeah. know and so you know and and several of my people have been part of the company for six seven eight nine years so they know that and they're like oh well because you decide now we're on core values but back then you didn't care you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying and so that's that's a tough part of it too and, and some people listening Absolutely. may be thinking that like i want to operate on core values but that wasn't me a year ago that wasn't me three months ago right yeah they're, they're probably saying that in their head and you got to start somewhere you got to draw that line and, and that's the thing you go to your people and you say, hey, I'm drawing this line. And I did that a year ago with, yeah. with him and everybody else. I said, I'm drawing this line. Wayne and I came up with these core values. And we came up with these core values based on where we're at now. Yep. Not where we want to be. These are right. our core values now. And yeah. so, yeah, that was the, the the tough part of it. And I'm not out of it yet, right? And so no, I it's going to be a to minute. That. Yeah. The, we had, you know, I think about my team and we rolled out core values 18 months ago about right i mean so mm -hmm. we're six years into this thing yeah and just wild west style right right like yeah. there's just you know no rhyme or reason to it from that standpoint as far as what we're about besides the dogs um and the way that i interacted with my team five six seven years ago uh, it's very different from how I interact with the team today. And it has to be. Um, I mean, gosh, four years ago, you know, every day, you know, we're out training dogs and it's, you know, margaritas at lunch. Right. You know, and, and the team, Jonathan's over here shaking his head. He was an <laughs> intern when, when he was in college, he was an intern with us. And uh, he's like, yep, I remember that. And it's just, it, it was just a, a time. It was just a different time. We were smaller yeah. and a couple of, those folks are still with us mm -hmm. a couple a small amount yeah. because when it started to really build into something and i'm not handling dogs every day anymore because we've got locations across the country and there's it's more management and oversight and it's not it's not just us in the backyard training dogs right it, it's it's changed and evolved and it's so naive to think that we can operate the same way that we did really at any point in the past if you're continuing to evolve and grow mm -hmm. and even if there isn't growth, but you're evolving, right. it's silly to think you can maintain the exact same policies and procedures and modes of operation. It, it just, it doesn't support that because that supported uh, a, a bunch of dummies training dogs, you know, in Virginia, it doesn't necessarily right. trans transfer to Texas and Michigan and, you know, Wisconsin and all these different things. And that was tough for a lot of the team and a lot of the team left because mm -hmm. they wanted the Josh who's going to hang out every day and train dogs with them. And right. like, this dude don't even care. He don't even train dogs anymore. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, if I get back and start training dogs, you one probably don't have a job anymore. Yeah. The business doesn't grow. Right. You know, so what's, the, or the friends you want to come work for us because it's a cool environment, a cool place to be. There's no opportunity for them because you want me also hanging out with you and training dogs. And it's, and I don't under, expect them to understand that fully, 
But when we start expressing that why and talking about, you know, why this has to be that transition, um, people are either going to get excited for it because they're bought into the company, they're bought into you as as leadership, um, mm-hmm. and they see it, or it's, ah, you know, he's lost his way, he's big time now, whatever right. it may be. And, you know, and they end up leaving anyway, but they weren't going to get us to where we're trying to go anyway. And that exactly. was hard because back then I'm like, man, these are my friends. They're, they're my, my staff, but yeah. they're my people. Yeah. And they're a big part of getting us to where we are today. During that season, they were vitally important to us. And I still pray for most of these people, want to see these people win in their life. They've been gone for years and I want them to do well because I'm, I'm grateful for what they did provide to us while they were here and what they did do and the relationships that were there, um, whether they, you know, want to keep that relationship or they think of it differently. That's fine. I understand all that. But for me, I know that we're not where we are today. If their part wasn't a part of our story, six, seven, five, four years ago. Um, and the people that are part of our story now, particularly that have come on in the last year and a half since implementing core values and stuff like that. Yeah, we've lost people. People don't agree with it, but we've had a lot more people come in and we've had a lot less issues um, than we did in the season where we had no values and nobody really knew what we were about. It's important. Yeah, yeah there's levels to it too. You know, there are some uh, if you want, if I wanted to be the 28, 29 year old Doug type leader, you know what I'm saying? Then I would be stuck where I was mm-hmm. back then. You know, yeah. and my organization wouldn't ever get any bigger than that, you know. And if uh, if if I want, so two of my targets right now is uh, 100 acres of land in Divine, Texas. You know, that's where I want to stake my family's at least material legacy, right? And uh, another one is I want 100 six-figure earners, right? I've got about 13 or 14 right now. I want 100 six-figure earners, that's that's my goal and probably by the time that i get there it'll be uh two times over because of inflation sure right yeah absolutely (laughs) yes yeah but but that's the point and i can't do any of that if i am you know getting drunk on thursday nights and sleeping in friday morning you know i'm saying i can't do any of that if i'm not operating with integrity and saying, Hey, if I'm going to run this marathon, or if I'm going to finish 75 hard or live hard year and then not finishing it. Right. And then they see me do that stuff. And then hopefully they're inspired to do likewise, not necessarily the same program, but just to improve their life, their personal life. And then of course their skill set. you know, if I'm, if I'm learning these new things and I'm bringing them back and I'm implementing them with them, you know what I'm saying? And hopefully they're, I'm, I'm lifting them up with me. That's and that's cool. the only way I'm going to be able to create the opportunity that I want to create yeah, and the, the company that I, that I want to create as well. And so it, 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 it has to happen. Those hard lines got to be drawn and then and it all starts with us, you know, cause if we don't do it, if we even step out of them for a day yep. or two, then we're full of shit. Everything we say is full of shit. That, well, yeah, it's a green you know? light for chaos. Exactly. Cause, cause you know, they but- will call you out on it. You know? Well, for sure. How can I, if I'm, you know, for us, it's so important, you know, health and well-being of dogs, for instance, right? Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, the way we communicate while dogs are with us, you know, they're getting, they're supposed to get updates every single day, pictures and videos. And, you know, we track meals, we track bowel movements, we track weight three times a week. Like they right. seem like real simple, basic, unimportant things, but they're super important. And we hold everybody accountable to that because at the end of the day, if I'm saying the health and well-being of the dog is the most important thing to us, Mm -hmm. but I let you slide by not tracking weight on a dog while it's with us. I let you slide on not documenting is that dog eating, you know, while it's with us. If, If I let it slide, if I see somebody mishandling a dog, and I don't coach or have somebody coach and correct and guide that. And if that continues, they no longer work with us, you know, very quickly, one of those things it's, well, that actually doesn't matter. That's not an important thing to Josh or the company. Cause if it was, I wouldn't get away with not doing it. Right. Or if they see me with a dog, not acting appropriately, mm-hmm. 
oh, well, here we go. We don't need to do that. Or if I'm right. help filling in for my sales team because someone's out and I'm working leads, well, Josh didn't call that person, you know, right away. Yeah, you know, that lead sat for a day. Yeah. I don't need to be, you know, he's telling me to be quick with these responses and and reaching out as soon as possible and texting after every call and yada, yada, yada. But he doesn't do that. Now, I mean, you jump into our sales system and you see me wearing people the heck out. Mm-hmm. And that's not the best use of my time right now. But I'm going to jump in if we're short. Right. You have this big transition going in on on your AT&T side. Mm-hmm. You're jumping in. Like you said, you're looking down the barrel of this thing, trying right. to figure it out. But you're going to do whatever it takes to get it straight. Absolutely. And that's what I'm going to do because that's, that's what leads the way. It's the only option. And if you give those variables, if you make the non-negotiables negotiable, it doesn't matter. And you're going to have massive, massive problems. Now, you mentioned the marathon. This is your first marathon, right? Yeah, I've done a I've done a half marathon before. I weighed about 30 more pounds when I did that. So it kind of messed up my knee a little bit. Yeah. But uh, how did this come about? Okay, so Zach Hawkins, he's a new uh, Apex executive. Yeah. Um, he's actually been in entourage for a while. We met at one of the Austin meetups. Okay. And um I think I think the way it happened is he said he wouldn't join Apex Executives unless I agreed to run a marathon. Cause we had been going back and forth about 75 hard. He does Ironmans, he's ran 19 yeah. marathons, he's a total beast, right? And so uh totally set you up. Yeah, he <laughs> set me up. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Like it, you know, I think Cameron Haynes is one of the like figures that yeah you know he's done 100 milers and he's 50 years old you know yeah. i was like why if if that guy can do it why can't i you know right and then and then i got i got i got zach in my corner which is you know exciting and he's sending me training plans and you know what i mean we're sending each other screenshots of our run that day you know that's and it's just cool like and only i don't know if you know this only one percent of americans have run a, a marathon yeah and anytime i can be a one percenter I'm all about it. And once I saw that, I was like, oh, I'm sold. So when is this race? So it's at the end of the November, and I'm deciding between two of them. Okay. Uh, I think one of them was during uh, Jose Lopez getting married. So I'm headed. Yeah, yeah. I'm headed out of town for that. Um, that was it, it was during that. So I'm deciding between two right now. But, yeah, they're at the end of the no- November or the beginning of December. That's cool. Yeah. So I've I've ran two marathons. Really? I and, didn't know that. A, That's awesome. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And a 50K. What? So, yeah, dude. They had to take me out of that one with like three miles to go. They had to haul me oh off the mountain gosh. in the back of a gator. Um, so I was, I guess, shoot, maybe 10 years ago. Like I was real big, real big, uh-huh. real big. And I was like, this sucks. And I went for a run. And I made it like a mailbox and almost died. I thought I was going to die just yeah. going to mailbox. And the next day I did like two or three mailboxes. And yeah, I just, I'm obsessive. And um, I was like 320 maybe, uh huh, something like that. Like a month later, I'm doing a 5K. Two months later, I'm doing a couple more 5Ks and 8Ks. Next thing you know, I'm doing half marathons. And we I've probably done six or seven half marathons. Signed up for a marathon. That sucked. That was brutal. Um, and then well, I did it. So I'm like, well, I can go farther. And I'm probably down to about 240. All right. Doing all this. Yeah. And um, that 50K was kind of the last one. It was a trail run in the yeah. mountains. And it's like you're literally running like deer, deer trails. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, we overnight, you sleep the night before, 5 a.m. start. You're right. up a fire road up this mountain. It's pouring down rain. Water's gushing down it. And it's awesome. And I looked like the dude selling pizza the night before. Everybody else, <laughs> like these elite marathoners and trail yeah, runners, little ass imagine. shorts and stuff. And I look like I'm the one delivering all the carbs. So, um, <laughs> but we we did that damn thing. And they kept checking. They're like, hey, Mr. Wilson, if if this if this cart catches you at a stop, like you got to be done. Yeah. And I was like, am I last? They're like, no, you're not last. I said, I ain't done. There, and nothing's picking me up. We're good. And I got to one of the checkpoints and bro, my arms had, they looked like elephant legs. My arms had swollen so much. My body was just freaking out. 
Yeah. And they had to, they had to, couldn't get my watch loose off me. They had to cut my watch off. They had to cut like bracelets like off of me. Um, because my arms were just selling, swelling and freaking out. I was so pissed off, dude. I've never not finished anything in my life. And it was like two and three quarters of a mile. And literally, they they would not. They threw me on the back of that thing, and I'm cussing them out down the mountain. I was so pissed. <laughs> I was so pissed. But man, running at that size just absolutely devastated. It's crazy. Yeah, my I'm, my legs. Yeah, I'm, I was uh, 227 when I started training, and yeah. I, I I had ran the half marathon similar to what you were at 240, and and yeah, it's 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 rough. And so I already made a, an agreement with Mark Z, my my fitness coach. Um, that I'm going to be down at 205 before I run that marathon. So I've got oh, wow. about, that's going to feel good. Yeah. I've got about another, uh, what is that? 17 pounds to go. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to feel real good at that running. Yeah. Good for you, that's man. Yeah. One percent of people do it. One percent of people do it. It's incredible. And that was the thing that was funny with running. Everybody's like, why are you running? I was like, I don't know. No one's out here bothering me. I can just get out here and go and do the deal. Yeah. And it's a form it, of meditation yeah it really it was i i wish that it was something that i still found enjoyment in uh, <laughs> yeah. but i but the thing is i'll get on the i'll get on the tread and i'll mm-hmm. walk run i'll do that now and that's yeah. been a big thing i've done this year i mean i got so many miles on that thing that's um, awesome and i got this thing i can set like my laptop on it and so i nice. can go and i'll have podcasts going or music or whatever but nice. i cannot to save my life go outside and run i just oh, dude, I, I don't I know prefer what. outside well, and that's how I used to yeah. be. I never wanted to be on the treadmill. I'm like, man, screw this. And I want to see the scenery. I want to, you know, I'm out in the country where I oh, live. Oh, yeah. It's all farmland and stuff like that. So I get to see the animals, nah. the deer, the birds, all that stuff. I don't see any of that shit. All I see are trees in Virginia. It's just trees everywhere. <laughs> there, there's there's no view, man. Look, I I can't thank you enough, man. I, I appreciate you coming on here so much. I need you to know that, that I love you. I think the world of you. I think that... Um, you're a great husband. You're a great dad. You're a great business owner. Um, you add a shit ton of value to my life, and I want you to know that. And I'm just so glad that um, you know we've connected in this past year. And I'm excited to do life with you and, and see what you do, both with your family and professionally, brother. Yeah, absolutely. I feel the same way about you, man. Um, I'm I'm incredibly excited to see what we all do in apex you know everybody it feels like everybody has been on this ride the last like 18 months or so yeah when when like really a lot of people started coming in and so uh i'm just i'm super excited for for what ryan's put together for us and us to all execute on it and take over the world it's a cool thing brother it'll be our group running the country maybe we'll see damn right damn right (laughs) hopefully hey we'll be we'd be in a lot better shape how do people connect with you doug how do they learn more about you and the business what's the best way oh that's easy um txbizdad.com or on any social media it's at txbizdad all right perfect that's awesome and just little um hint to everybody or a little pro tip if you're into barbecue at all he's the man to follow this guy's down here um cooking up a storm and doing a great job so i'm gonna holler at you next time i'm in san antonio but i'm gonna see you in a couple days in dallas for sure sounds good josh thank you all right later brother